Hi folks, and welcome to another episode of Open Analysis Live. So today we're gonna to talk about a quick trick that you guys can use to quickly dump out or unpack different types of malware that are using a simple architecture flaw in the way that they pack their samples. So this will actually apply in this video to samples that are packed with the Meta 64-bit, the 2X version, which is a very difficult packer to attack directly. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you if the malware developer makes a simple mistake in the way that they build the packer or the malware, you can completely circumvent the meta and simply dump out code. And of course, the architecture flaw that we're talking about here is if the developer decides to do some process hollowing. So some of you might have noticed that last week we posted a version of this video and then we took it down. The reason for that was that the sample that we used was not malware, even though it did have quite a few detections on virus total and was submitted as a malware sample. Once we unpacked it, we realized that it was actually a commercial software. Now we put up the video because we wanted to explain this trick because there is a lot of malware that uses the trick and so it's quite useful if you have to deal with these types of packers. But the developer of the software actually contacted us and he's actually a really nice guy and just asked us if we could take it down because he thought that it might actually be exposing some of his code to people who would want to hack it or steal it. And we did have a little bit of a discussion and we explained that we want to show this trick because we think that it's important because a lot of malware is using it and we see this a lot so it is a trick that we want to show. And he suggested well, why don't you just demonstrate the same technique using a sample that you guys develop yourselves? So that's what we've done for this video. So we've created a sample ourselves using the same technique that's used in the wild for a lot of malware, even though what we're doing today is just a completely contrived example to demonstrate it for you. So it isn't actually a malware sample. It's a sample that we've built ourselves and I'll explain how we built it. And then we'll go through using this technique to unpack it. So of course, the technique that we're talking about here is process hollowing. And as you can see from this little diagram, if you were to try and attack the Meta directly, it's quite difficult to get at this running code that is in the Thimita protected process. There are some walkthroughs that I've seen for 32-bit versions of Thimita, the 2x version from a while back, but none that I've seen for 64-bit so far. It, it is kind of challenging. However, a lot of the time, developers who are using these packers don't quite understand the mechanics behind how they work or how you might unpack their samples. So what they do is they'll try to inject into a hollowed process to try and hide their malware. And by doing that, they in fact remove the code from the Thamita protected process and put it into an unprotected process, which we can then just dump out. So this video really is just about how to dump process hollowed samples, but we want to show you guys that even though it's protected with a very difficult commercial packer like Thamita, it doesn't matter. Once you inject that code into another process, if you haven't taken steps yourself to protect the code, well, it's easy to dump out. There's no more Thamita protection on it. So that's what we're going to demonstrate today and let's just jump over to our VM and we'll get into it. So for our demo today we're going to be running a virtual machine using Windows 7 64-bit and we have a couple tools installed all of which I will link in the description of the video below. What we're doing is we're actually using this awesome demo that Hasher Azade built to demonstrate run PE process injection. So she has some nice source code here which we've just compiled. We've built ourselves a 64-bit run PE injector just called run PE.exe here. Again I'll link to the source code code below if you guys want to build it yourselves and take a look at it. So if we look at the source here for a second, what it does is it'll actually inject this demo.bin into calc.exe and then run it in calc.exe. And of course, you can put whatever you want in demo.bin. So in this case, demo.bin is an exe. I'll just drag that over to die here to show you guys. So you can see that it's compiled with MASM and it's uh, Microsoft linked, it's a 32-bit EXE. And this is key. So we chose a 32-bit EXE, both because we didn't want to recompile Hasherzade's code to inject 64-bit EXEs, because we're kind of running short on time here. And also because we want to show the difference between the processes to prove to you guys that we are starting in a 64-bit process and injecting into a 32-bit one. So you can see that there is a difference there. So you guys can see that this demo.bin is a PE file. So why don't we go ahead and grab that built file here and we'll drop it over to the desktop and then we will use a demo version of Thamita to protect it. Now we're using the demo version, which restricts it to only run on our machine here, but that's okay. It has most of the protections that you would see in the wild. We're just limited in what we can do with it and the fact that it has to run on this machine that we're building it on. So let's grab that run PE file. 
And then we're gonna go over to the protection options just to show you guys that we have it all set up here. We're gonna allow it to run on our VM here. We just wanna show you guys the VM protection stuff into media, we're, we're not too interested in this. So with that, let's go into the virtual machine stuff here and we'll show you guys how we have it set up. So we're gonna turn off automatic handling and we're gonna use the shark guys here, shark red, shark red. And these are just pretty complex VMs. Okay, so we can see that we've set all that up and let's protect our file. So it's gonna take a minute here and uh, what I'm gonna do is through the magic of video, I'm just gonna edit. Okay, so it's uh, successfully protected here. So we'll just close this out. So let's drop our run PE file over into die here. So we can see that is the Mita when license 2x protected and it is a 64-bit PE. So just like we had in our last video. So if you saw this in the wild, you would think, hmm, this is probably gonna be difficult. So let's open up Press Explorer and we'll show you guys what this looks like when it runs. So we'll run it as administrator here. So it's running here and let's run our run PE file. It gives us this little Thamita warning because we're using the demo version, so it's okay. And then it starts calc.exe, the original file exits, and then calc.exe pops up this little thing saying I'm the injected exe, right? So this is what we actually want to unpack. So let's kill this. Okay, so let's just take a quick look at what it would look like if you tried to unpack Thamita directly with x64 debugger. So it's really not something that we're going to talk about in this video. I just want to show you guys that if you were to try and do this, you get some of these errors and you get this debugger error saying that they found a debugger. And if you were to try and like say hide the debugger, I know there's other ways to do this. I know you could like inject some DLLs, but there's also anti-hooking stuff in Thamita. So it's, it's actually quite difficult. So that's not going to work too well. So instead, why don't we try our trick here where we actually tack the injected process instead. So we'll still run it, but this time without the debugger. And then once it runs and it starts calc.exe, what we'll do is we'll actually use our 32-bit debugger because this is a 32-bit process. We'll attach to it and see if we can't dump it out. So what we'll do is we'll use Sela here. We'll attach to calc.exe and let's make sure that it doesn't try and take the PE headers from disk because of course this is a process hollowed process. So the PE headers from disk aren't going to work. So let's just go into options and uh, make sure we don't use our, yeah, okay. So I've already cleared this off. So let's create a dump and we'll save it to our desktop here as calc dump. Here we go. So it even has like the icon of the little injected exe here. So now that that's done, we can close Sela. We'll keep our debugger open here. So the first thing we should do is just check this dump in PE bear, which is a great tool from Hasher's aid that I use a lot to check out PE files. It's going to show us the PE file and we take a look at the headers. Now there's a little error there because it looks like the entry point is incorrect. So this isn't going to point to anywhere in the file. So what we need to do is we need to find the actual uh, original entry point for the injected code. Now there's a bunch of different ways to do this depending on how the code was injected, but because it's process hollowing, that means that the full PE would have been injected in that code. So that means the original header for the PE will also be in there. So all we have to do is find that original header and then find the entry point from that and just fix it in our dump file here. So the best way to do that is to take a look at our image base, which is at eight and four zeros. So we'll actually attach to calc.exe here and we'll take a look at the memory map and we're gonna look at eight and four zeros. We'll just follow that in the dump here. And so now we're looking at the MZ header here. So all we have to do there is just parse out from the MZ header where the uh, entry point is. Now that's actually kind of easy to do because we can look at PE bear. So we go to optional headers here and then they'll even highlight in optional headers where the entry point is. So we can just sort of match these bytes up in what we're seeing here. So it's B15C. So we'll just scroll down a bit till we see B15C right here. And then from PE bear, we know that the entry point here is highlighted here, which is actually four D words away from that value, which we just saw here. So that value of B15C, I'm just using that as a marker to find it in the code here. So I saw here it was B. 15c and then 1d word, 2d words, 3d words, 4d words off. So we know that the entry point for the injected PE file is one and three zeros hex uh, offset. So we just have to change this here to uh, to match this word right here. Now, of course, this is a little endian and I just did that calculation in my head, but what you really have to do is just flip these bytes and then you'll get the hex value for it. So you flip them at zero, zero, one, zero, zero, zero. So one and three zeros. So we'll just flip over here and we'll do one and one, two, three zeros. So it actually turns out that the uh, entry point is actually the base. So the entry point of the uh, injected PE is also the first byte of the uh, injected code base. Again, this isn't going to be universal. This only works because this is process hollowing. So the entire PE file has been injected. So we actually can dump that whole thing out. Now, I should mention that if you guys wanted to, you didn't have to use Sila or Sila to dump out the PE file. You could have actually just copied this stuff out of memory directly. So we can see the MZ header here. The whole PE file has been injected into the memory 
memory of the calc.exe process. So we could have just dumped that out manually if we wanted to. Okay, so let's close up all these processes here. We'll clean up our desktop. Well, first let's actually save our fixed thing here and we'll save it as calc dump fixed. Okay, and then we'll just close up our workspace here. Okay, so now let's actually run the dumped out exe and prove that it actually worked. So there we go. We've dumped out it successfully. It's completely unpacked. So if we were to like open it up and die here, we can see that it's the same MASM compiled program that we originally injected. There we go, MSM, Microsoft 32-bit exe. So there we go, super quick method to unpack stuff if they're using process injection, regardless of what packer they're using. So even if they're using something super difficult, 64-bit Thamita 2x, doesn't matter. If they're injecting that code, they're actually removing it from the protection of the packer and putting it into a completely unprotected process that we can just dump from. So hopefully you guys find this useful. Again, a lot of malware does this. So if you come across something, a sample like this that is packed with a difficult commercial packer, always check and see first if they're doing process injection, because if they are, well, hey, you can circumvent the whole thing and you don't have to attack the packer at all. So keep those comments coming, uh, keep the samples coming in. We actually have a few in the queue. Our apologies for the double post. Again, we just, we don't want to be people who are unpacking commercial software. You know, there's enough malware in the world that we can talk about that and not have to inconvenience anyone who's developing commercial software. So I guess we'll say uh, one video every two weeks. <laughs> And remember, if you're not subscribed, subscribe down below, turn on the little bell for notifications, one video every week, we'll try and keep this up. And until next week, keep exposing the mechanics behind the malware and stay curious.